so 1.5.3, the three-dimensional the uh, delta function. So we're just going to generalize um, that one-dimensional direct delta function to three dimensions. And it's rather easy to do so. Um, we just define this uh, uh, d cubed to be equal to d of the x component, d of the y component, and d of the z component. So if, if any of those, uh, if either the r vector um, components are, you know, non-zero, then one of these terms is going to be zero, the entire, entire thing will be zero, but if all of them happen to be zero, so r is pointing to the origin, then this thing blows up. And um, the integral, we're going to take all space of d cubed of r vector, d tau, that's just written out this way, all of these from negative infinity to positive infinity, and I can't write infinities for some reason, of dx dy d of z, and that's just dx dy dz. And separating it all out, we get, um, well, you can see how the, you can separate the terms out. And the end result is that at that one point, you're going to have the integral dx of dx and the integral dy of dy and the integral dz of dz and 1 times 1 times 1 is all equal to 1. So if you include the origin in this triple integral you're going to get the value of 1 and if we multiply if we do the same thing but we multiply by some scalar field um, or even a vector field for that matter uh, times this d cubed thingamabob um, then that's just going to be f of the zero vector. And the same token, if we basically offset like we did earlier, so we start with r vector and we subtract some r naught vector, that's going to be equal to the thing that would make this zero, which would be r naught vector. Okay. And um, so we can pick out the value using the Dirac delta function from the integral. So going back to our original example that kind of spurred this whole discussion along. So we, we wanted to figure out the divergence of r hat divided by r squared. Okay. And the, um, the interesting thing is that this vector field is zero everywhere except at the origin. Um, or the divergence is zero everywhere except at the origin. And yet the integral of this thing was equal to 4 pi, right? Because um, we know that the flux through the surface was 4 pi. So we're left to conclude that this is the actual formula for what the divergence of that was, right? And so now when we take the integral of the divergence of that vector field, uh, d tau. Now we get 4 pi, which is in agreement with what the flux was. So, um, more generally, um, if you define this curly r to be, this r vector to be r vector minus some origin, um, some um, common boundary point, and we're going to define, so these three equals there, then the divergence of a similar field is always going to be 4 pi, the direct delta function in three dimensions of that r vector. So we're going to use this curly r throughout the book to mean the displacement from some common origin. So, um, since uh, the gradient of this is equal to that, and if you've been solving uh, the problems earlier, uh, problem 1.13, one, 1 um, you'll, you'll realize that gradients are actually quite easy to calculate in that regard. The, the conclusion is that if you take the gradient or the, the divergence of this, 
you know, the divergence of that, then you find that the Laplacian of 1 over r is equal to minus 4 pi um, that. So, um, and that's, that's you know, um, you think that's a pretty esoteric result, but it's actually going to come in useful when you try to prove the Helmholtz theorem. So, um, and we're going to be stumbling into this again and again and again as we study our electrodynamics.